What is going on everybody? Boris here at your College of Design Studio. Today we're talking about broadband and this is the follow-up to our first talk on broadband. Uh, in the first one we covered the Bush administration and this one we're going to cover the Obama administration. But before we jump in, we just want to go on a little rant and vent. Um, I hate Comcast. There it is, I said it. I, I know it's a strong word, but from the bottom of my heart, I, I detest Comcast. It's a terrible company. It mistreats its customers. It, it treats its customers terrible. It's basically a cattle, a source of cash. Um, welcome to the world of Comcast where income is guaranteed and uh, customer service is non-existent. So, yeah, I've been dealing with Comcast uh, for all of today. Basically, some issues. And they're... they're IT support is supposed to know their job. It's they're supposed to know how to help fix issues, uh, but they don't. And not only is their staff untrained and unknowledgeable, but they stick you on a hold and they make you go through a torturous process just to get uh, on a call and talk to somebody. And then this is what actually happened. This is what this is real real story. I called. Uh, for some service, uh, some issues with port forwarding for the server, as you, as you might notice, is down. Uh, and it's going to be down for a while until Comcast um, figures something out. Um, anyways, they put me on hold for a while. She says, I don't know what port forwarding is. Your IT support, and you don't know what that is. That's pretty interesting. I was like, okay. And then puts me on hold, and then they drop the call accidentally so then I called back and I explained you know I called I was speaking to so and so and they, they dropped the call and like oh we apologize and the only thing that they actually said they said nothing of substance the only thing that they said throughout the whole conversation was uh, we appreciate you calling and we want to ensure that we resolve this issue not once did they actually say anything that had to do uh, with the question that I asked uh, they basically diverted it and every time I would asked them a, a specific technical question about um, IP configuration, uh, you know, dynamic DNS, uh, static IP port forwarding, porting, you know, opening all those channels. Uh, they would say, "Well, we appreciate that question, and we want to make sure we get that issue resolved." And uh, it's, it's just so frustrating. Anyways, that ran out of the way. Let's jump right into broadband, and we're talking about the Obama administration. The Obama administration has sought to secure the availability of broadband supply given projections of rising demand. To address possible spectrum shortages in the near future, the Obama administration intends to auction some new spectrum that is currently in government hands. In addition, the president wants to allow certain commercial spectrum holders, um, primarily television broadcasters, to voluntarily relinquish a new spectrum and to share with the government in the proceeds from an auction of that spectrum, an idea known as voluntary incentive auction. Uh, the central goal is to maximize the efficient use of available broadband that is currently in commercial hands but is not utilized to maximum capacity. President Obama believes that building a nationwide broadband network will strengthen our economy and increase the number of available jobs. He holds that by connecting every corner of our country to the digital age, we can help our businesses become more competitive and our students more informed, our citizens more engaged. To achieve these goals, the administration has sought to um, put to use underutilized federal bandwidth in addition to commercial bandwidth. Um, as we talked about of how they, they, they tend to take bandwidth not utilized by TV stations and auction it off to the federal government. In an effort to match supply with rising demand, the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology recommend that the federal government using industry partners establish a new federal spectrum access system that will serve as an information and control clearinghouse for band by band spectrum registrations and conditions of use and allow non-federal users to access underutilized spectrum in both commercial and federal holdings. Um, the central aim of that is to increase data transfer speeds while meeting rising demand from wireless and mobile users. The Obama administration alongside California District 14 representative issue uh, Democrat is supporting a big once infrastructure approach uh, and I think that's a great idea. Um, they support that to transportation construction projects and according to the plan the installation of broadband infrastructure and channels should occur when the ground is already being torn up for construction or other transportation projects like highway repairs. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration estimates it is 10 times more expensive 
to dig up and then repair the road um, than to do it when it's already being uh, fixed or built. Executive Order 13616 um, signed by President Obama directs federal agencies to help carriers time their broadband deployment uh, activities to periods when roads are already under construction. The Democratic Party maintained control of both the House and the Senate from 2007 to 2011 when the Republican Party reclaimed the House. While Democrats held a majority during the first two years of the Obama administration, they did not always present a unified front on heavily opposed legislation and thus lacked the 60 votes necessary to overcome a filibuster in the Senate and push through legislation that was heavily opposed in the absence of bipartisan support. Uh, in April of 2009, when uh, Senator Arlen Specter, uh, Republican, switched to Democrat, um, Senator Kennedy was unable to participate due to health reasons. Uh, it wasn't until August of 2009, uh, when Senator Kirk was appointed to set, uh, Senator Kennedy's seat, uh, that the Democratic Party had a 60-vote count to overcome filibusters. Uh, that didn't last very long as the official count for the 111th Congress in 2009 is 55 to 41 to 2 uh, for the Senate. Democrats fared better in the House, 256 to 178. Uh, this reversed in 2011 when Republicans held 242 votes to Democrats 193. During his first term, President Obama approved legislation that expands the FCC's authority to make more spectrum available via incentive auctions protects the FCC's discretion to make spectrum available for innovative unlicensed uses like Wi-Fi and gives federal agencies greater incentives to make spectrum available for commercial use by allowing them to use auction proceeds to invest in upgraded wireless capabilities. Um, it also will establish a wireless public safety network that will include excess spectrum capacity available for commercial use and will raise auction revenues for deficit reduction. Through congressional action, the Obama administration aims to both increase the availability of bandwidth while spurring favorable economic activity. To achieve this, infrastructure is to be deployed simultaneously with ongoing transportation, construction, and repair projects. Congress passed a bill that will require states to install broadband conduits as part of any covered highway construction project installed along such highways to accommodate multiple broadband providers. To ensure that the increases in available broadband were used for legitimate commercial purposes, the Obama administration and Congress sought to enforce protection of intellectual property laws. To that end, the House of Representatives passed a resolution called Stop Online Privacy Act, better known as SOPA. The legislation failed to pass Congress due to concerns over the uh, varied interpretations of the bill's language and privacy issues. And to be quite honest, um, some of the language in that bill was very vague and I wasn't comfortable uh, with that bill. Um, I certainly was opposed on it uh, personally and I didn't want to see it pass and I was happy when it did. Um, the proposed bill is not criticized for its efforts to stop online piracy but for its broad language and ambiguous definitions of what is considered a criminal act. The resolution finds the reproduction or distribution, um, including by electronic means, during any 180 day period of one or more copies or phone records of um, one or more copyrighted works to be in violation of copyright laws. Due to the rapid proliferation of material online, it is sometimes difficult to judge what falls under copyright law. In addition, end users who unknowingly access copyrighted data or materials fear being misidentified by data collection programs and thus being hit with severe fines and penalties. To ensure privacy concerns and safety of end users, the Obama administration has proposed a Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights uh, that will place reasonable limits on the amount of data websites may gather and will establish clearly defined rules to facilitate end user understanding. Thus far, the proposed Consumer Privacy Bill has not been introduced to Congress or signed into law and is in development um, in a developmental stage. Um, whether the House or Congress manage to pass such a legislation remains to be seen. President Bush's goal of making broadband widely available to U.S. consumers took a backseat after the events of 9-11. Uh, the administration shifted focus to increasing cybersecurity both physically and digitally in the aftermath of the attacks. Uh, however, during his first term, Congress managed to pass several bills that made grants and loans available for telecommunications development and broadband infrastructure deployment. The Obama administration, uh, aided by PCAST, 
um, and industry focused on increasing the supply of available broadband by auctioning and using underutilized federal bandwidth in order to stimulate uh, economic activity and growth through executive decision making um, and congressional legislation such as Dig Once executive orders and the Broadband Conduit Deployment Act of 2011. The administration sought to reduce broadband installation and operation costs while matching supply to the ever-increasing demand. Congress during the Obama administration also aimed to ensure efficiency broadband use by limiting bandwidth used for nefarious purposes such as disrupting commercial activity, infringing on copyrights, and other black market activities. Uh, so far, no legislation has succeeded in getting through Congress and the President's uh, proposed Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights has not been introduced as a bill in either the House or the Senate. A current survey of U.S. customers finds that approximately 71% of U.S. broadband internet subscribers are very satisfied with their current internet service at home, while um, just 3% are not satisfied. <laughs> Based on my previous rant in the beginning of this video, I doubt the statistical validity of this finding, uh, but we'll let that one slide. Uh, this is representative of the approximately 45 million cable and 79 million telephone subscribers. Whether either administration succeeded in making broadband more affordable or widely available is open to debate. However, broadband availability uh, for legitimate commercial activity has been a critical factor for both administrations. The Bush administration sought to encourage broadband de uh, development and deployment through deregulation, regulation by the federal government alone, economic incentives, and congressional action in the form of bills allocating money to research and development, grants and loans, and infrastructure deployment. President Obama used executive rulemaking and congressional action to ensure efficient and cost-effective infrastructure installation as well as efficient use of available commercial and federal bandwidth for a variety of commercial activities. Through a combination of methods and different approaches, both administrations have actively recognized the value of secure, low-cost and widely available broadband for U.S. consumers and, and private enterprise, but more needs to be done to reduce monopolies and increase high-speed, uh, low-cost broadband for residents in the United States. Well, that's it for part two, folks. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you paying too much for internet? Are you satisfied with your current ISP? Um, do you have Comcast and do you hate Comcast as much as I do? Um, what are your thoughts on that? For example, you know, internet speeds, um, the one gigabyte, the speed that Google is talking about. I think between, if, if you're going to add one gigabyte cap capacity, uh, they're doing it between universities and cities. I don't think that helps the average consumer a whole lot. Uh, although I'm excited for one gigabit internet and that will be fantastic if it does happen in, in the near future. Um, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on our College of Designs production.